this <laughs> Why? As Matt Russell's my jimmies. There is something about the openness of the third, even with the little... I think the weird thing is, I had a moment yeah. where I tried to build a wall in that slow zone. Yes. Because I'm like, well, naturally, I would want to wall this off. I'm going to play Mac, you know, do anything defensive. Yes. But then you realize... That when you try to build stuff in the slow zone, it builds slower too, Kevin. <laughs> and then I had all these <gasps> weird random Wait, games, right? Forge, where Nate, I would get wrecked forge, by that. Forge, Forge, Forge. Oh my God, is it happening? Sorry, guys, I wasn't paying attention at all, but I'm very excited. Is I, it happening? I talked to you guys about this a long time ago, but Silky seems to be on the money. He immediately knows what is up. This is gonna be fun, but the thing is though, these guys are so good at these like random ass cannon rushes. It's like pilot here, pilot there, pilot there, and then oh, suddenly... I thought he was just trying to block Reaper Swarm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the second probe shows up. It's gonna Ooh. it's right drop cannon. You gotta be careful. Whoa, that's a Whoa. lot of damage on that probe. The probe somehow lives. Can you believe that? Well, I think three drones is the magic number, right? Yeah, absolutely. Denial, but so. You need to get another one going. There oh, we go. One goodness. of those. They're so good. They're disgusting. They're so good at this. And now he's got shields and he's going to cancel it. And the pilot on the high ground is actually still alive. I think it's very important that he takes care of this. But eight links are already on the way. Wait. Okay, this is Is it weird, just going to be one cannon on the low ground with no vision up? Yeah, but he's going to get vision up eventually. And he's going to get a robo. And oh this boy. is going to go on forever. It's very important he saves his first cannon, but he will. Wait, can you fight this? No, you can't. So he's going to send him to the main base. I sure don't have a full wall off. Does he have a cannon at home? Whoa, this is risky, mate. That's like a lot of links that are out. Yeah, no, that's dangerous. He's gonna force another cancel there. But can the queens from the high ground gun down this? That's exactly what I'm thinking. It's gonna take a little while, right, before yeah. he can actually get, get a war prism. Because like a war prism would give vision, sure. But, but do you open get... prism? No, you always no. open in mortal. Exactly. Hmm. All right. Well, yeah, the queens are gonna come over here, and uh, can he get the pylon? Or do the queens have enough range? Is the, was the plan to use that adept that he made to try and use the shade for vision? Like, yes, I that is a very good possibility, Nathan. Hey, do you think... Okay, there's a shield better enough. I don't know how I feel. I, I was going to say, do you think they can reach that pylon? <laughs> I, I think they can. At least one of them should be able to reach. I mean, the queens have pretty good range, don't they? And queens are known for their range, usually against air, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> we'll I guess see. The cannons, uh, getting rid of the cannon first is also fine, too. Man, can you believe that we just saw two 30 plus minute games and now it all comes down to this cannons, batteries, and an immortal? <laughs> but you know what? I think most people at the stream are okay with it. Because yeah. we've seen these guys play late game. Now let's see how well Silky does against the build that Shadona has truly embraced. The build that he always seems to fall back onto if things get a little bit dicey. That you photon know. cannon took about 10,000 damage so far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the bad got so close to dying, too. It's got three health. All right, first Ravager are on the way. Silky's on 24 drones, and obviously he's got a two-base economy. That's nice to activate the barrier that quickly. Hey, this is actually going to be bad, right? Because the Immortals, they are not going to be able, you can, not gonna be able to heal up the Immortals. And now let's see if these Queens are actually going to get in range of at least the battery. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably the other best part about the way that this build opened up with. Like, getting rid of all the energy on yep. the battery should have made it a lot easier for the uh, Immortals to be pushed back. Yep, that's mine as a battery. Whoa, that War Prism is taking some damage as well. I think Shadona's not used to microing his units when he thinks he's above batteries, because he thinks it's always going to be okay. But those batteries are actually kind of drained. You always hope the battery's going to be there for you, Kev, but sometimes it's just not. I think that Silky's actually doing a pretty good job. Well, the first queen does die. I mean, if, if yeah, there is, there's no dedicated anti-air, the prism becomes a whole lot more difficult to deal with. And then you can just juggle against the Ravagers forever. It's important that Silky does get some kills here and there as well. Now, getting an Immortal is very, very difficult. But if he gets pylons, if he gets batteries, if he gets cannons, that is something, right? I but feel like any cheesy Protoss should be a god at doing this unless you lose oh, the prism! Okay. That would have been so sick. But at least pushing back the pylons is nice. Just like without queens, I feel like he should be able to just micro his way through it. But so far, Silky, I mean, he's he's not dead. Don't forget, a lot of these batteries are very low on energy. I mean, getting the Immortals does seem hard. I don't like Silky being there. That's a little bit too far forward. Where are the extra queens? Did he just lose all the queens? Yeah. Yeah, he lost all of them. He's got two building right now. They're about to pop. Oh, man. Three Immortals are so good. Shadon is really starting to put in some work with these Immortals. And even though, I mean, I kind of like Silky's defense, I just don't think it's going to be enough, Nate. I felt like he played well, but Shadon is good with his build, man. It's very, very strong. And like we are saying, if the Queens aren't alive to push the War Prism back, then he can just juggle on top of the Ravagers all he wants. 
And that makes this easy peasy for the Protoss. There you go. The Queens are dead once again. And two more are going to be done oh, soon-ish. But the Ravagers are all done. And GG. For an exceptionally fast third base. That's like a three minute Suspicious. 30 third. Suspicious. You look at that Overlord. I don't trust that Overlord. I don't either. You can, you can tell when it's up to no good. It's kind of the same as when there's a probe that you can tell is about to cannon rush. An Overlord that's there right in that edge. Those are the two adapts that I mentioned, but obviously Drogo is going to need something at home, man. He really has no vision at all of that Overlord in the left bottom side. He might see it soon that there is a Nidus network, but this is one of those moments where if I would see oh this, my. I'd be like, yeah, what do I even do? You know what I'll do? I'll do absolutely nothing. So he knows. Do you recall everything? Drogo, you got to bring these home, man. You really got to bring these home. It doesn't matter how many drones you kill. Okay, it drops the revelation. So at this point, he knows. He's going to chrono boost out of the immortal, obviously. Run, run the adepts, run. He, he has to stop it getting up. There is way Zelt too much the Zerg. Oh, no, the adepts not going to make it home. Does go for a quick recall. Nope. Nope. They both go down. Oh, my goodness. That's so painful. He needs adepts in the main base, I think. Like I think you keep the immortal here, but you need adepts in the main base. Oh, excuse me, Zealots. Because Zealots are good against Nidus networks, but he has no vision at all of the oh, corner wow. of his main base. Uh, he's, he's just overwhelmed right now. There's too much Zerg, Roddy. I don't know how he can possibly get a defense. He's got an immortal, a shield battery, and two oracles that are out of energy. Nope. He's going to have to evacuate this main, but he's got so little production right now. Yeah, but even if you evacuate the main, what are you going to work with? And two gates and a robo? Is that it? I mean, these oracles are eventually going to run out of energy. The two zealots are going to put in some work. There is a battery. Oh, it's such a shame that the immortal was out of range with the shield battery, by the way. But I look at all these queens, and I just don't see these queens ever going down. And that is a very painful pylon to lose as well. Yeah, queens even going to deny the mining on the third. Drogo shut back down to one base mining. And uh, a lovely play here from Eliza. One of the biggest maps in the map pool. One where it's hard to do a traditional assault. So Eliza going completely all in with the Knight is one. Masters of Queens and Zerglings. And Drogo here was opting for the greedy route. Scouted it just a little bit too late in this match. <laughs> there are still over 50 Zerglings and 8 Queens that have taken literally zero damage. That obviously means that the longer these Queens are around, the more energy they'll get as well, and the harder it is for Drogo to kill these uh, Queens. And this one is all over. There's no other way to put it. Once again, you're playing the quarter or the round of 16, rather, of a very big event. So nobody ever wants to leave too early. But this is impossible, Pick. Yeah, and numbers-wise, that one Immortal needs to kill about 48 Zerglings. And nine Queens. Yeah, nine Queens. That's, I'm like, <laughs> which, which one of these units can kill nine Queens right now? And there's an Archon, which is a nice unit oh, to cool. have. Yep. Uh, but, you know, there's no prism to juggle that or anything. If it gets surrounded, it'll still go down very quickly to Zerglings. I mean, he's actually trying to repower this slowly, but setting these oracles are still alive. I must say that Drogo's doing a really good job. And with the one Archon, I don't want to say that I believe, because I still don't really believe. Now all of the queens are going to unload in the natural as well. But maybe he can send everything back to the main base. Well, now the queens are going to go back into the main base again. Nidus networks are beautiful, aren't they, Pig? He's about to connect the creep from the main base <laughs> to the natural of his opponent. <laughs> he's going to bring out that cannon rush for sure. We've seen this evolve. We saw it just earlier today, of course, on the mainstream with Shadone showing this sort of recess one. Now, there's this, yeah, is he going to do it on this corner? Um, just next to the Rubik's Cube kind of lights there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real dirty. And, and I tell you what, against some players, you see this, you're like, okay, this is probably a fake. If Haz does this, overreacts. <laughs> More yeah. than you're going to underreact. Well, TLO is only dangerous. pulling two extra drones. He's seen the second probe, so he knows it's committed. But he's just going to try to force a few more structures out and kind of annoy Has. But he wants to have his follow up quick enough. We saw Silky pull a ton of drones against Shadone. Yeah. But he ended up losing so much mining time that his ravages were like massively delayed, massively delayed, and he wasn't able to fight it. And if that position gets up and they're able to just siege you with immortals, it, it really can be very problematic. So you can see Dario here going for the minimalistic response. Just trying to like say, look, I'll lose a bit of mining time, you can lose that, but I can still get Ravages up at the same time. And he's got to balance this out, because we're going to see a Robo drop here in... I mean, it'll probably go on the low ground, right? You wouldn't drop the Robo in the main base? It has. <laughs> if he wants to drop a Nexus here, as, as far as I'm concerned, he's going to do it, even though he doesn't even have the space. Yeah, he, he actually cancelled a cannon to make space for the Robo. Oh, that's beautiful. That's art right there. He's doing a finger he's painting in it. PLO's base uh, right No now. hesitation. I like the way Tielo is reacting to it, but obviously you need to get enough Roach Ravager out yeah. to uh, be able to deal with this, and you need to not overcome it. If you lose patience against this, even for one second, you're like, all right, I've had enough. Yeah. You go into the fight, you fight the cannons plus the shield batteries, you're going to be in big trouble. With this in your main base, I kind of feel like you almost have to try to break through before the, the prism gets out, or like at least have worn down most of the shield Can battery you? energy. The problem is the shield batteries 
It's it's really rough. Like I, I normally prefer an option where you cancel a hatchery, have it on their side of the map, Ooh, and you're, the, you're trying to get it up. But that's a nice cancel here being forced. We're gonna see the first immortal starting here in a second. As Tilo's already morphing two Ravagers, he can st start on spamming this corrosive pile here on top of those buildings. They're clumped up as well, so he's going to try and place the corrosive piles in between the buildings so that he's hitting two at a time. Ooh, he found a six spot here. Oh, did he just accidental corrosive pile on yeah. the, uh, the low ground? But there we go. So he's starting to throw them. Yeah, he's hitting both shield batteries at once. A lovely hold position angle. First Immortal's almost out, though, so that's going to, you know, it's going to be the end of that very, very soon. Queen on the high ground has a transfuse. She'll have another one very soon. Yeah, I think the, the key Ooh. against this build if you, is if you can reach, like, six... Yeah, Ravagers just, plus yeah. as soon as possible. You're just going to spam by it and he's going to go for it. He pulls the drones. Oh, he wants to shut wow. That down he's just going to go for it. I love it. I actually love this decision. He's going to try and take out the cannons here. The Immortal is getting overwhelmed. Yeah, he's losing a few drones, but the Immortal backed into the corner, eats three files to the face, and TLO realizing if he can get rid of this right now, he can afford to sacrifice a ton of economy for it. And there isn't even, uh, you know, the investment in a robo unit right now. He's just falling back on the Nexus behind it. Has get off my lawn. Get out of here, you dirty protoss. And uh, no, he actually does. I thought he was going to stay in that one. <laughs> that's a that's a really really nice hold though from Taylor. I've, I haven't seen anyone pull the drones like that before, and I think it's such a good decision. Yeah. Because you were saying wait till you get six ravages. That times out with the warp prism being there. Yeah. And then once it starts ferrying up and down, if you can land six piles at once, there's no chance for healing, right? You just knock out a pile, knock Taylor out a pile, knock better. out a cannon. He had the perfect reaction here, yeah. I think, with this. You called it, had to go for it before the prism was out. Shut this down. Even though he lost yeah. a bunch of drones, doesn't matter. He can re-drone behind his... He's the one with, I guess, somewhat of a tech with the Roach and Ravagers. He can counter pressure behind his... Has usually he's not going to have any tech. Maybe the best he could do is maybe if he dropped a Stargate on his side of the map, but he yeah. would have a choice between that and Nexus. He chose the Nexus, and he was like, well, I'll just die to the counter attack anyway. So let's just leave and go to map number three. Yeah, that economic advantage, right? It's like, oh, they're on the same workers, but like two hatcheries and a queen injecting, producing drones. It's like, you'll have triple the worker count in no time. The ability to uh, just explode into workers if you've already got those hatcheries finished as a Zerg is, is very powerful. So I love that reaction by TLO, and it's something yeah. I, I wish we'd see more of people uh, committing to that, especially when it's in your main base. Like, I think, wait for the six Ravages if it's a bit further away, you've got more space. When they've got an immortal, like, standing there in range of your hatchery, hitting it while getting healed by a shield battery, you know you're in trouble. And that was the sort of situation that Hassid set up, so... Dario does get a point on the board, ties the series up there one-to-one. -one. A very different be... PVZ than what we saw in the previous one. <laughs> a little bit different. <laughs> Slightly faster.